Dear listeners, tonight I invite you to embark on a journey to the frozen lands of the north, where the mountains kiss the sea, and ancient legends are whispered by the winds. Our story is not about an ordinary mortal, but about a powerful witch named Helga and a brave Viking named Bjorn, whose destinies intertwine in the heart of this frozen wilderness. So, get comfortable, close your eyes, and let the chilling embrace of the North envelop you as we delve into this tale of magic, sacrifice, and the unyielding bond between man and nature. The Viking and the Witch of the Fjord The Adventure in the Land of Mysteries Long ago, when the gods of the North still walked the frozen earth and the spirits of nature whispered to men, there was a land shrouded in mystery and fog, hidden from the world's eyes. This fjord, guarded by towering mountains and beaten by the cold sea's waves, was a place whispered about around fires during the long winter nights. Only the bravest Vikings dared venture into that feared place, known for its hidden secrets and the enigmatic being that ruled over it, Helga, the witch with immeasurable powers. Helga, said to be as old as the mountains and as wise as the gods, lived in a cabin built on steep cliffs, suspended above the raging waters of the fjord. The cabin, made of white bones and driftwood, appeared to be a place of legend, a refuge of shadows and lost souls. The winds blowing from the sea carried whispers and old calls, and those who came too close felt fear creeping deep into their souls. The people of the surrounding villages both revered and feared Helga. It was said that she could control the sea and winds with a mere gesture, read the hidden thoughts of those who crossed her threshold, and reveal the deepest desires. Before her, no one could lie, and those who tried were punished with merciless cruelty, for Helga's magic knew no pity. On a gloomy day, when the sky was covered with heavy clouds, and the winds howled incessantly, a Viking warrior named Bjorn decided to seek Helga. His village had been hit by unending storms, which had destroyed crops and kept ships anchored in the harbor. Desperation had gripped the people, and Bjorn, known for his courage and strength, knew that without Helga's help, his village was doomed. With a heavy heart but determined to save his people, Bjorn ventured into the terrifying fjord. The nights were long and cold, and when he reached Helga's cabin, he felt the cold and fear coiling around his heart. The cabin, with its bone and dark wood walls, seemed like a nest of shadows, a place where time and space flowed differently. Helga appeared from the darkness like a ghost, with hair as white as snow dancing around her and eyes glowing with a cold, blue light that seemed to come from the earth's depths. What do you seek here, Bjorn? she asked, her voice calm but with a power that made the air around tremble. Bjorn, accustomed to commanding and being obeyed, felt that in front of this woman, he was nothing more than an insignificant mortal. And yet, he straightened his back and began to tell her about the storms that had ravaged his village, about the sea that no longer allowed fishermen to go out, leaving them without food and hope. His words, mixed with the wind's breath, seemed small and weak compared to the power Helga emanated. The witch listened in silence, her piercing gaze unchanged, unblinking. She seemed to absorb every word, breaking it down into hidden meanings and weighing each fragment of truth or lie. That silence, instead of bringing relief, weighed on Bjorn, making him feel the burden of his request, as if he were asking not just for a favor, but a part of the witch's soul. Finally, Elka smiled. But that smile was not one of warmth or compassion. It was an enigmatic smile that deepened the wrinkles on her face, 
making her seem even older and more powerful. And what will you offer me in return? She asked, and in those words, Bjorn felt clearly that whatever he offered, it would not be enough. And yet, Bjorn was prepared. He pulled from under his cloak a shining necklace made of the purest gold, encrusted with precious stones that sparkled in the moonlight like fallen stars. It was a priceless treasure, passed down through generations in his family, a symbol of power and honor. Bjorn felt the weight of his decision but knew that without Helga's help, his village would not survive. This is my gift, Helga, he said, handing her the necklace with a trembling but determined hand. Helga took the necklace with a slow, deliberate movement. She looked at it for a long moment, then raised her eyes to Bjorn, and her smile deepened as if she knew something he could not understand. A beautiful gift, she said, her voice carrying a tone of approval but also of warning. But it is not enough. Bjorn felt a wave of unease tighten his chest. What more could he offer? He had prepared for this moment, but now, in front of the witch, everything seemed insufficient. What else do you ask, Elka? he asked, and though he tried to sound firm, his voice betrayed the growing anxiety in his soul. Elka leaned closer, her gaze becoming even more intense, as if she were searching his soul. I ask for something more precious than golden stones, she whispered, her voice becoming a soft but sharp breeze. I ask for your time, Bjorn. A year and a day you will stay with me, learn the secrets I carry, and become more than just a warrior. Only then will I grant your wish. Bjorn felt his heart sink. The thought of leaving his village, his family, and his life for a year and a day was almost unbearable. But knowing that without Helga's help, his people were doomed, Bjorn felt he had no choice. With a determination he could barely muster, he approached the witch and, with his head bowed, uttered the words that would seal his fate, I accept. In the deep silence of the fjord, time seemed to flow differently, without the rush of the ordinary world, yet with an intensity that pulsed beneath every moment. Bjorn, once a fearless warrior, now found himself in a completely new world, one where his sword was no longer useful, and the strength of his arms played no role. He had accepted Helga's bargain, and with that, he had embarked on a journey whose end he could not imagine. As soon as the sun began to rise over the horizon, painting the sky in shades of gold and pink, Helga woke Bjorn from a heavy, deep sleep. Mornings at the witch's cabin were always shrouded in fog, a dense mist that seemed to hide not only the landscape but also time itself. Every day, Elka led Bjorn along hidden paths of the fjord, where the earth met the sea and the spirits of nature had their dwellings. Elka did not speak much, but when she did, her words had the way of ancient stones. One day, she led Bjorn to a large rock where old runes were deeply carved into the stone, some almost erased by time. Here, she said with a calm voice, is where you will begin to learn. Each room carries a story, a power, and you must discover its meaning not just with your mind, but with your heart. For Bjorn, these first lessons were the hardest. Used to confronting his enemies with a sword, he felt powerless before these enigmatic symbols. Often, he spent entire hours standing before the rock, trying to penetrate the mysteries hidden in lines and curves. In the first week, he lost his patience countless times, but Helga, with a cold firmness, 
reminded him that every mistake was a lesson, every failure a step towards wisdom. Late one evening, Helga sat by Bjorn, who was silently observing the flames, when darkness had descended and only the fire near the cabin illuminated the surroundings. You cannot rush learning, Bjorn, she said, her tone soft in contrast to the intense days of training. The art of magic requires sacrifice and patience. Develop the ability to listen with all of your senses, not just your ears. If you are willing to listen, every wind whisper and sea wave can disclose something. Over time, Bjorn began to understand. In the mornings, when the mist lifted above the fjord, he would sit silently before the rock with runes, letting the silence envelop him. He learned to observe how the light changed on the stone, how each shadow could tell a different story. And slowly, runes that had once been mere meaningless signs began to take on a life of their own, revealing meanings he could never have imagined. Helga noticed Bjorn's progress, but never offered him compliments. Instead, when Bjorn managed to decipher a rune, she would lead him to the next challenge, always more difficult than the last. She taught him to use the plants around the fjord, each with hidden powers and secrets. She sent him to gather rare herbs at midnight, in the moonlight, explaining that each plant has its moment when it best reveals its magical essence. Bjorn learned to speak with the spirits of nature, those invisible beings that lived in every tree, in every stone, in every piece of land. At first, they responded to him with indifference or even mockery, distrustful of this mortal's powers. But as time passed and Bjorn showed patience and respect, the spirits began to accept him, offering him precious knowledge and guidance. One of the hardest trials for Bjorn was learning to communicate with the wind. One winter day, when the harsh northern winds blew incessantly, Helga sent Bjorn to a cliff top where the wind was strongest. Stay here, she told him, and listen. Until you learn to speak with the wind, do not return. Bjorn spent hours on that cliff, battling not just the cold that penetrated to his bones, but also his doubts. He felt small and insignificant in the face of this force of nature, but remembering Helga's words, he learned to calm his mind and listen. He felt how the whispers of the wind spoke to him, carrying messages from the past, present, and future. At the end of that day, as the sun began to set, Bjorn descended from the cliff. He was exhausted but felt an inner peace he had never known before. Helga met him with a silent look, but in her eyes, Bjorn read something new, respect. Although she said nothing, he knew he had crossed an important threshold in his journey. With each passing day, Bjorn's bond with Helga deepened. It was no longer just a master-apprentice relationship, but one of complicity and mutual understanding. Bjorn now understood that magic was not just about the power to control nature, but about harmony with it, about sacrifice and patience. He had learned to see beyond the surface of things, to feel the subtle energy that flowed through everything around him. One evening, Helga called Bjorn to the fire, where she told him a story about the Norse gods and how they had sacrificed part of their power to create the world. That's how magic is, Bjorn, she told him. It's not about what you can take, but about what you are willing to give. That night remained etched in Bjorn's soul. He now understood that magic required not just knowledge and skill, but also an opening of the heart, a willingness to give up something of oneself to gain something greater. And with each new day spent with Helga, Bjorn felt himself transforming, not just as a warrior, but as a man. 
Thus, the days turned into weeks, and the weeks into months. Bjorn, once a man used to measuring his worth in battles and victories, discovered a new world full of subtleties and mysteries, a world that could not be conquered but only understood and respected. Finally, three months had passed since Bjorn entered Helga's mysterious world, a realm of ancient magic and hidden knowledge. That morning, the sky was leaden, and the wind blew harshly, like a premonition of the trial to come. Helga approached him with a gaze that concealed something more than usual, an intensity that made Bjorn feel a deep unease. Without saying much, she led him to a high cliff rising above the turbulent waters of the fjord. The waves crashed furiously against the rocks, throwing white foam into the air, as if the sea itself was unleashed. Today, Elka said with a calm but determined voice, You will face the sea. Without my help. You must calm the approaching storm, show that you can control the elements on your own. Her eyes, a cold blue, fixed on him with an intensity that seemed to pierce his soul. Remember everything you've learned, Bjorn. Listen to the wind, feel the sea's rhythm, and let the power flow through you. Without adding anything else, Elka stepped back, leaving Bjorn alone in the face of the rapidly approaching storm. He tightened his cloak around his shoulders, feeling the cold wind that seemed to cut through his skin. He sat on the wind-beaten rock, right in the spot Helga had indicated, and closed his eyes. He emptied his mind of all thoughts, focusing only on the sounds around him, the howl of the wind, the roar of the waves, the distant whispers of the water spirits. At first, he felt overwhelmed by the forces of nature that seemed to defy him. The waves rose higher and higher, almost threatening to sweep him off the cliff, and the wind tousled his hair and cut his breath. Every attempt to utter an incantation seemed to be swallowed by the deafening noise of the storm rushing towards him. It was as if the sea did not want to be tamed, as if it was playing with him, testing his resolve. But Bjorn was not a man who would give up easily. He remembered all of Helga's lessons, every word, and every gesture. Instead of trying to control the forces of nature by force, he changed his approach. He began to truly listen, to feel the rhythm of the waves, the pulse of the wind. In his heart, he imagined himself as a knife cutting through chaos, a point of calm in the midst of the storm. Slowly, he spoke the first words of the incantation, feeling the power beginning to flow through him, from the solid ground beneath his feet, through his body, and into the wild air around him. Each word was spoken with a growing confidence as he immersed himself in nature's rhythm. With each incantation, he felt his connection with the spirits of water and air becoming deeper, more real. At first, the waves seemed not to listen to him, crashing furiously against the rocks, but Buin did not give up. He continued to speak the incantations, wrapping the words in his will, allowing the energy of nature to mix with his own power. It was a silent struggle, one that took place not only outside, but also within his soul. With each incantation, Bjorn's strength grew, as if he were absorbing the storm's power, gradually taming it. The waves began to decrease in intensity, as if the sea was beginning to listen to him. The wind, which had once been a furious howl, began to decrease in intensity, becoming a gentle breeze that caressed Bjorn's face. Slowly but surely, the storm calmed, and the sea became calm, almost reflecting the sky above. Bjorn, with deep, heavy breaths, opened his eyes and looked around. 
The sky, which had once been shrouded in dark, threatening clouds, now opened up, revealing a canvas of shining stars. It was as if the entire nature had recognized his power and offered him silent peace. Bjorn remained motionless, overwhelmed by the moment, realizing he had succeeded. He had not only overcome the external storm, but also the internal one. The feeling of accomplishment was profound, but there was also another feeling that filled his soul, gratitude. For Helga, for her lessons, for her patience. Without her guidance, he would never have come this far. In the distance, Helga had silently watched him throughout the trial. When Bjorn succeeded in calming the sea, an almost imperceptible smile lit up her face. It was not a smile of surprise, but rather of satisfaction. She had known that Bjorn had the power within him, he just had to discover it himself. And now, before this wave-battered cliff, he had proven he was more than just a warrior. Helga approached Bjorn, stepping slowly over the wet stones, and stopped beside him. Without saying a word, she gently touched his shoulder, a gesture of silent approval. Bjorn felt that at that moment, a new bond had been created between them, one based not just on respect, but also on a deep understanding of nature and the power that flowed through the world. In the silence that had settled over the fjord, the two remained there for a while, contemplating the star-filled sky and the calm sea stretching at their feet. Bjorn felt how his entire being was flooded with a peace he had never known before. That night, under the fjord stars, was one that would remain forever in his heart, a symbol of his transformation from a simple warrior into a man of nature, magic, and wisdom. Time had passed like a breath of wind in the silent fjord, and the day of parting between Bjorn and Helga had finally arrived. A year and a day that had been the time they had promised each other, a period that, although seemingly short, had felt like an eternity, transforming Bjorn beyond anything he had expected. Now, standing before the cabin where he had learned to tame nature and decipher the world's mysteries, Bjorn prepared to say goodbye to the one who had been not only his teacher, but also a guide for his soul. The morning was quiet, with a gentle light piercing the dense fog floating above the fjord. The wind barely whispered, and the sea's sound was so soft it seemed an old, memory-filled murmur. Bjorn, with his heavy cloak wrapped around his shoulders, looked at the cabin for the last time. Built from bones and driftwood, this cabin was not just a building, it was a place of transformation, of bonds that defied time and space. Helga stood beside him, silent, her gaze directed toward the misty horizon. Between them, there was no need for many words. Everything had been said and understood over that long year. Bjorn knew he was saying goodbye to who he once was. The man who had come here, a brave but unpolished warrior, was now just a vague memory. He had learned to understand not just the world around him, but also the world within, a universe of peace and knowledge that had opened his eyes and soul. Thank you, Elka, Bjorn finally said, his voice carried by the wind like a gentle echo. I owe you more than I can express in words. Elka, with her deep blue eyes, smiled slightly, a smile that reflected both wisdom and affection. You do not need to thank me, Bjorn. Everything you have learned, everything you have become, was already within you. I only helped you discover what was hidden. You have been a good apprentice, and, more than that, you have become a friend. Bjorn felt her words warm his soul, as if a small, 
constant fire had been lit in his heart, one that would accompany him from now on. He was no longer just a warrior, he was a man who understood how to live in harmony with the forces that governed the world, how to speak with the spirits of the wind and water, and how to find peace in chaos. The parting, though inevitable, was not bitter. It was more like the end of a natural cycle, like the changing of the seasons or the passing of day into night. And yet, deep in his soul, Bjorn felt a weight, a subtle sadness at the thought that this special connection, this bond created through magic and wisdom, was changing. But at the same time, he knew this bond would never truly break. Even if his steps took him far from the fjord, he and Helga would remain connected by invisible threads, woven from knowledge and mutual respect. With one last exchange of glances, Bjorn raised his head and began walking down the narrow path leading to his village. Each step seemed both a return to what he had been and an advance toward what he had become. The path was familiar, but Bjorn's gaze had now changed. Where he once saw only rocks and trees, he now saw life pulsing in every corner of nature. He felt the presence of spirits silently greeting him, recognizing him as one of their own. When he finally reached the edge of the village, Bjorn was met by people who looked at him with wonder and curiosity. They saw something in him they could not describe, a profound change that went beyond mere appearance. There was something in the way he walked, in the way he looked at the world around him, that spoke of the power he had gained and the peace that flooded his soul. In the village, Bjorn was welcomed with open arms, but with the silent respect people reserved for someone who had seen and understood more than they had. Word had spread about how much the weather had changed in his absence, the storms that once ravaged the village had subsided, and the crops, once weak and threatened, were now rich and fertile. People attributed these changes to Bjorn, feeling that his presence had brought something sacred and protective. As the days passed, Bjorn took on the role of leader, but he was no longer just a warrior leading through strength and determination. Now he was a guide, a man of wisdom who could speak with nature and foresee dangers. Every decision he made was in harmony with what he had learned from Helga. The village prospered under his leadership, and the people respected and loved him, feeling that they had not just a protector, but a man who understood the depth of the world they lived in. Just as the sea finds its peace after a storm, so too had Bjorn found his place in the world, transformed from warrior to leader and from man to wise man. He continued to live each day with gratitude and awareness, knowing that wherever he went, that bond with Helga and the fjord would never break. And on those quiet nights, under the starry sky, Bjorn would smile silently, feeling the deep peace of knowledge enveloping him, a peace that only a bond born from wisdom and sacrifice could bring. And so, dear listeners, our story for tonight has come to an end. So, remember that sometimes, in the darkest heart of the storm, the light of hope can be hidden, and in the face of the greatest danger, the human spirit can find a way to triumph. If you enjoyed this journey to the heart of the North, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss another magical story. Until next time, I wish you peaceful dreams and magical adventures every night.